And today is the next installment of our informational series. And today we are focusing on routine maintenance. What are the basic components you need for servicing and keeping your ride running smoothly? Okay, key point, number one point, most important in the life of your engine is the blood, the lifeblood of your engine, motor oil. Why is it so important? I'm gonna demonstrate a key point with a lovely assistant here. Lo lovely Lola, come. Hello. Hey, happy Halloween. Yes. Lola, can you do something for me? I wanna demonstrate a concept here, which is take your two hands and rub yeah. them together really fast. Yeah. And what's happening? Really, really hot. Why? Do we know? Because, yeah, you know, it's friction. Yeah, so this is like Mr. Science TV show. Yeah. So friction, thank you, Lola. Friction is the enemy of your engine because when the parts are rubbing together, they can get really hot, which increases wear. And eventually, if it gets too hot, you can melt down your piston head and have a seized engine, okay, and just toss the whole thing. So. It's very important that you keep your oil maintained. You keep the right oil level and you replace oil when you need to because oil does break down over time. It gets really hot. It goes through all the abuse inside the motor and figure about 20 hours of normal use, you need to replace oil. If you're doing a lot of races, even more often. I'm going to ask Lola to come here again. Lola. Do you know where you put oil into this motor? Here. Yeah, let, this is the oil filler cap. So just like a car, there's a place to put oil in and you can unscrew that please and just hold it out for everybody to see. Yes. So you fill your oil there and you can check the oil level and you can also check if it got gunky. This one's a little bit mangled, this oil filler cap. But uh, anyway, this is where you can check that you have oil and again, most important thing, you want to make sure you keep your engine lubricated because friction and heat is the enemy and will reduce life of your motor. So if oil is the blood of your vehicle, of your bike, then the spark plug is the spark of life. So spark plugs, super important in keeping your ride running smoothly. Remember this little thing right here, this little gap produces an electrical spark, which is basically a little fire that goes off in the combustion chamber, you know, in front of the piston here and explodes the fuel because this is called an internal combustion engine. All of these motor vehicles are internal combustion vehicle. What's combustion? An explosion, right? So this thing ignites the gas, causes an explosion, pushes the piston to drive your vehicle. So critical. It's got to give a good spark and you want to make sure your bike is running smoothly. You have normal combustion. If you start to find things like bad idling, like you know, you stop at a light uh, or whatever you pause, you start seeing your engine not running smoothly or stalling. That's a pretty bad situation or even cold starts. It's a winter it's, or even not winter, but cooler. You try to start and you have trouble starting. It could be, that your spark plug is starting to wear. So, oh, by the way, also talk about not only the idling issues and cold starts, but you lose fuel economy. You lose uh, compression, which means you lose power. So all these things to consider. So here's a worn spark plug, okay? It's very black. What's that black? It's called carbon. It's a sooty buildup. Um, and it builds up all over the place, including right on between the gap there, between the electrode and this little arm. So once that gap gets all clogged up, your spark gets affected. Uh, generally, if you remove your spark plug and you see it's a little red, that's normal. But if you see black, you're getting a lot of carbon buildup and it may be time to replace them. Generally, spark, spark plugs will last about 1,800 to 3,000 miles, which is about 3,000 to 5,000 kilometers. And when you're going to change your spark plugs, you gotta look at a few things. First of all, you might see here, I have three different sizes of spark plugs. There's a lot of parameters, right? It depends on your engine size. Uh, this overall stem 
uh, this part too, the stem length, the electrode length, the part that goes into the motor, the part that sticks out of the motor, the thread diameter itself, the thread pattern. So all this is critical. You need to match up the right one. So here a little closer up, we can see this spark plug and this little motor here. This is like a, a mini bike or lawn mower uh, motor, but still the same thing going on here. Um, so when you are replacing your spark plug, uh, you need a spark plug wrench, first of all, to remove it. Again, you should, first thing you should do is check, check for carbon buildup, uh, check if it's red or black. Um, if it's really black, it's time to replace. And make sure you get exactly the same type of spark plug to replace. Make sure you hand tighten first. Tighten down the spark plug by hand. Make sure you don't cross thread it. You know, you can mess up your engine completely if you do that. So hand tighten and then tighten with a torque wrench at the proper torque that your motor specifies. Make sure you got it seated right. If you don't, you're gonna end up with a loose connection and you can get more carbon buildup. You can end up leakage of the motor and cause big, big problems. So if you wanna know more about how to install, replace, check your spark plugs, we're gonna do some more in-depth videos about all these subjects, uh, about maintenance, about all kinds of parts. Right now is kind of an overview, but follow us for more and we will have some videos coming up soon, how to select exactly the right spark plug, show you how to install, how to remove. So check, on, check for that. And next point on routine maintenance here is we talked about the oil being the lifeblood of your vehicle. Now we're talking about the muscle. What is transmitting the power from the motor to the wheel to give you traction? The chain. Chains do wear over time and they get a lot of abuse, grit, dirt, mud, right? They're exposed. So generally you should clean, degrease and regrease your chain every 2000 kilometers or around 1200, 1300 miles or so. Um, again, it depends on the conditions. If you're really doing a lot of like dry dirt or sand uh, racing, you know, through trails where you're getting a lot of grit, you may need to do it more often. And when do you need to replace your chain? Well, over time, if you start seeing your chain slack a lot, if it's no longer matching up with the sprocket teeth very well because it's getting stretched. You know why it gets stretched? Because every time you twist the throttle, you give it an you know, instant pull on the chain, and then when you break, you let it go. So you can end up stretching the links. And over time, everything wears out. Look at me, <laughs> I'm wearing out. But anyway, uh, your chain eventually breaks down and when it gets too slack, you should replace it. But when you replace your chain, you should also look at your sprockets. Most of the time when you replace your chain, you also replace your rear sprocket and front sprocket because the teeth are also getting a lot of wear and tear because they are meshing with the chain throughout all this. Subscribe to our videos because we're going to have a detailed instructional video on how to replace your chain, your sprockets, uh, so keep tuned. Another key component in routine maintenance to check is your fuel filter. And this is a really simple thing to get out because it's usually exposed on every ride. Um, fuel, to, fuel filter is key in filtering the fuel. And what does that mean? Well, there's a lot of times impurities in fuel, depending on where you get your gas from or if you use a rusty gas uh, filler can, or even some bikes, this one has a plastic tank, but some bikes have a, a steel tank. And over time, the steel can rust or metal flakes or even paint flakes can come off in your fuel supply. So fuel filters like this one have a paper element inside that catches any impurities in the fuel and just let the liquid through and catch all the other gunk. Actually, Rutu makes a model like this one here that has a magnet in the end, and the magnet is an extra step to catch metal flakes, like I said, the rust that might come off uh, from a fuel tank or from a filler tank. So change out your fuel filter. Generally, every 10,000 kilometers or around 6,000 miles, uh, and it's visible so you can see when it gets pretty dirty. Okay, next in our list of components that you should maintain regularly to keep your motorsports vehicle, your power sports vehicle, running smoothly and giving you great longevity in life is, remember we were talking about the blood, the oil, and we were talking about the chain is the muscle, so sticking with this whole body motif, the lungs of the motor, 
is here, the air filter. You need good airflow in your motor. Why? It helps with compression, right? Uh, sorry, combustion. Um, this is an internal combustion engine. It needs air to make that explosion. So keep your air flowing smoothly. How do we do that? We, we have a filter here that keeps dirt and debris out of the airflow and out of the motor eventually. So there's lots of different kinds. Um, like this one here is a small stainless steel filter and it's got a, a built-in paper element. This is a large version similar. This is a sponge type. So different ones have different ways of cleaning, but basically you should take the filter off, use uh, compressed air and blow from the inside so all the dust goes out on either, either type, works the same way. And then these can be rinsed also. You can rinse this in water, make sure it's dry before you put it back on your vehicle. And you can actually apply a little bit of oil, like a few drops of oil that will spread through the foam and catch any really microscopic dirt particles. You wanna keep the dirt out of the airflow, which eventually could get into your motor. Okay, one more key component in keeping your bike, your power sports vehicle running smoothly and for as long as possible is brakes. Uh, the brake system is a little complicated, but one of the easy parts and one of the most commonly replaced parts or routinely replaced parts will be your brake pads, especially with dirt bikes. Uh, dirt bikes and pit bikes and most ATVs they have disc brakes with a caliper like this here This is a dual piston caliper. The pads are the item that gets the most wear um, Rutu has some high-performance pads that are they call semi-metallic when you replace your pads or when and if you ever uh, replace the brake fluid for example this DOT 3 or 4 brake fluid Make sure you always bleed your line. So what does that mean? Well, brake fluid over time can get moisture absorbed into it. It just happens because the fluid is, uh, I forgot what they call it, hydro, hydro, whatever. It likes to absorb water from the air um, and it even bleeds in through the brake openings down where the pads are. So over time, water gets into the brake fluid and it reduces your stopping power. So you must change out your fluid and you must change your pads as they wear out over time because they are getting a lot of friction. Remember, we're talking about friction with oil. So remember, when you do that, after you replace your pads, bleed the line. And what does that mean? It's another problem. You got water goes into the, into the uh, brake fluid, but also air can leak into it and get little air bubbles. So there's actually a little valve down here. And we will have another video in the near future that shows you how to change out the pads, how to change your rotors, and even how to bleed your lines. So keep watching and subscribe. Always check your brake fluid levels. There's two places you can check easily. Um, if your bike has this on a hydraulic system like this, the, this is the rear master cylinder for a foot brake. Um, right here, you see there's an inspection window. This shows your fluid or no fluid right here. You can see it through this glass window. And then on the front brake, you have another master cylinder up here on this bike. And there's another inspection window here. And how do you fill the fluid? It's a little bit more complicated. You have to unscrew these two uh, uh, screws and take off the cap and then fill it. And remember, always bleed your brake line after you do that.